Leave the everyday stresses behind and come on an action-packed ride with me, Penny Wells, and the Discover Oz crew as we travel to the top of Down Under. on a white knuckle ride to the top of Down Under. Hi, I'm Penny Wells and welcome to the next action packed episode of To the Top of Down Under. You'll enjoy the fantastic scenery as we head for Haraburuni Conservation Reserve Park. Before we're driving our way into Poppy's Pools and take a magnificent flight over the lost city. So jump on board and let's go for a ride. Leaving Seven Emu Station and needing to stock up on supplies, Baralula, 100 kilometres away, was the next port of call. The facilities at Baralula include several general stores, fuel stations and a public phone. It is the only place for several hundred kilometres where you can get a gas bottle filled for camping stoves. Well, we just stopped up in Baralula and we spoke to Sandy from Cape Coral for Tourism and she's actually given us a mud map of a few local attractions around here and they sound really exciting so we're just about to go and check them out now. The closest one is the Karaburini Conservation Reserve located on the eastern side of the Carpentaria Highway. The various walking tracks are well signposted. The waterhole is the closest. Nice little waterhole. Mm, very pretty. Yeah. Haven't seen lilies for a while. Oh. I don't think I've ever seen a lily with so many flowers. Yeah. Have you ever smelt a lily before? No. Pretty I try nice. not to get that close to the water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> and they smell really pretty. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. flower pretty or? Yeah, yeah. Really nice. This tranquil lagoon is a bird watcher's delight with a purpose built high to keep you shaded while you observe. Don't forget your water when you do the Baralala walk. It's only about two kilometres and should take you about one to two hours. You can check out these amazing, amazing rock formations. Not far up the track, the massive sandstone pillars loom into view. Very cool. Oh, yeah, you can see the rock put up there now. Ah, that's why they have arrows, because I'm off the track again. <laughs> Lucky. Even though a recent bushfire had gone through the area, there was still plenty of native fauna and flora to admire. Some pretty cool bugs here. Oh, well, 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 one spot. The shade from the towering columns provides a cool change from the scorching heat of the day. <laughs> this track was really interesting. How did the sandstone pillars form? Yeah, by the water and tides and pressure. Yeah, it was really uh, great that they had those signs along the way on the track. They mm. told you how it all, all came about. And uh, well worth the effort of coming in, even though it's a hot day. It's, um, yeah. it's turned out really well. And the colours were beautiful as well, the oranges. And to see those trees growing up on the side of the yeah. cliff face there. And Just also, the temperature change when you went inside the cave. Yeah, that's right. 
and um, the bits that have slid off the pieces of rock. Mm. I like that. <laughs> no, it was really good. Returning to the main road, we backtrack to Ryan's Bend Road. This track runs parallel to Batten Creek, and you will cross many of its tributaries along the way. Your journey will bring you to a T intersection. To the south is Cape Crawford and to the north, Roper Bar. Veering north, the road fords Batten Creek. For those unfamiliar with touring, it may seem odd to wash the dust off our vehicles. But when you have been on dirt roads for several weeks, it's hard to pass up the opportunity to give your vehicle a well-deserved tub. to Poppy's Pools this morning. Now it's Aboriginal land, so you need to get permission through Cape Crawl for tourism. The road in for the most part is easy going until you pass the old homestead where it becomes a bit more of a rugged full drive track. For this reason, most visitors opt to fly in with the helicopter service provided by Cape Crawford Tourism. Poppy's Pools is located 70 kilometres from Cape Crawford on Bohemia Down Station and is traditionally owned by Harry Lanson from the Gudinji tribe. The worst of the track is less than a kilometre long and can still be a challenge for a well set up vehicle. A small boggy section was enough to bring us all to a halt to investigate further. Jodie was first up and it looked like she had it in the bag. With best intentions, Jodie's attempts to back the vehicle up in this situation only seem to make matters worse. With no further progress made forwards, it was time for the winch to come out. On a tight track like this, and with the next vehicle towing, the only option was winching. It was a valiant effort on Jodie's part, and she kept her cool whilst winching herself out. 
Rather than getting hot under the collar, pushing the vehicle hard and possibly doing damage to her four-wheel drive, remaining calm paid off for Jodie, remembering she is a long way from home out here. A winch is certainly a worthy investment for anyone planning a remote touring holiday. It will save a lot of wear and tear on your vehicle. Alright, job done. High five Jade, <laughs> did well. <laughs> After negotiating this boggy section, you will emerge at the base of the unrivaled Poppy's Pools. This truly is a unique oasis. I don't know of any other place like this in Australia. It's inspiring to see a place like this, but to fully experience its awe-inspiring beauty, one must totally immerse themselves in its remarkable formation. A small boat is provided for visitors to paddle up to the thermal pool, where your senses will be in overload as you soak up the surrounding unpainted landscape. Poppy's Pool's water has a high mineral content and remains at a very soothing 27 degrees Celsius all year round, as the hot spring's water rises from deep within the Earth's crust. The layers of sandstone that create the thermal waterfall double as a seat for a therapeutic massage and also a well-positioned diving platform into the deep emerald waters below. absolutely beautiful spot. The water is surprisingly warm. It's absolutely gorgeous here. Don't you wish you were here? Although the beauty of the falls will surprise you, the campsite is almost non-existent. With no facilities at all and a lack of cleared dry space, you will need to be completely self-sufficient and self-reliant to camp for any period of time here. After the break is some more handy hints for first-time travellers. There is one piece of advice I really should give you if you're planning to travel into the Gulf Country, and that's that it's essential to have good tyres, because up here, the rocks are just torture on your tyres. Now before we left, I insisted that both patrols be fitted with new rubber. And after 8,000 k's of hard touring, you can see why. Especially if you plan on towing a camper or a caravan up here, means that your rear tyres are going to cop an absolute battering. The extra weight, coupled with the traction requirements, means that your rear tyres are going to be pushed to their limits. And the wear on the rear tyres compared to the front are going to be double. So if your tyres aren't A1 when you leave for your trip, they just simply aren't going to make it. So don't let a simple thing like tyres ruin your adventure. 
After seeing two of the three must-see sites Sandy had recommended, the last one could only be reached by helicopter. The string and integral part? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <rulometer. laughs> They call it a rulometer. If I don't, if I haven't got a balance or something, if I don't have that on the part legally, I'm going to have a Yeah. Well, it takes a bit of string. That is good to know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's a fake, haven't you, James? That's a super way. Bye, Mum. Love you. <laughs> yeah. Having Cape Corbin helicopter Yankee Sir Lima 44 becoming in airborne Heartbreak Hotel, tracking east to the lost city, not above 1,000. Traffic Cape Corbin. Whilst this was Jodie's first time in a helicopter, I guess she might have been a bit nervous, whereas I was a tad bit excited myself, to say the least. You may be wondering where the final destination of this scenic flight is. Perched on a plateau near the Abner Escarpment, situated on the McCarthy River Station, is a large expanse of sandstone columns aptly named the Lost City. These large rock formations, some 25 metres tall, are only accessible by helicopter. We are here to complete a 1.5 kilometre long ground tour that covers a small section of this outcrop with our guide Sandy from Cape Crawford Tourism. Okay, welcome to the Lost City. As you can see, I've got a pretty spectacular backyard out here. So I'm going to show you through and we're going to do a little bit of exploring. We're going to climb up the top and, and um, I'm going to walk you through the track which is about 1.5 1 kilometres. So what we've done so far, we've flown 11 k's from Cape Crawford. Cape Crawford was discovered in 1882 by Lindsay Crawford driving cattle through this big valley over the back here and he saw that Cape from a distance thinking he was by the ocean because all this sand coming down into the valley from the sandstone so he called it Cape Crawford. When he got the cattle to that cape he realised that there was no ocean but kept the name Cape Crawford. So what we're looking at here are ancient columns of sandstone. They're 1.4 billion years old so some of the oldest rock in Australia and also in the world. It's this of 97% silica sand which is just like a big pile of beach sand and that outer crust holding it together. Once we get into the rock, I'll sort of explain it a little bit clearer for you. You guys up there, try not to touch these bushes with the pink flower. It's a native hibiscus. They're just really prickly. Mm. It's like mm. no, I want to touch it so much yes, more now. Yeah. <laughs> Have a look, see in there? See all those tiny prickles? Yeah, there, it's a bit slippery. It's uh, quite smooth. All the silica, the water flows through here in the wet, so all that silica is really smooth. Wow. And also people are touching the oil from their hands. Oh, okay. Over the years it's made the rocks really smooth. Wow. This is a root of a rock fig just yeah, here. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. And this is a really good area here to actually see what this outer crust is that's holding this sand together because it's all in colour. So of course you've got your orange, which is your iron. Pink is the silica, white is the calcite, and that black is a type of lichen. We call this desert varnish. And wherever you see this colour on the rock is just an algae, so that indicates water flow in the wet. Hmm. And as you're coming in, you'll see those lovely smooth rocks. 
just have a look over here. Sandy is a fantastic guide and look where she's taken us, just amazing. But make sure you wear some good walking boots because there is a bit of climbing. This is what I call the top of the world. Look at this for a view. View from here, isn't it absolutely beautiful? <laughs> the tour runs for approximately two hours and is a must for anyone passing through this area. For further information on the Lost City or Poppy's Pool, jump onto the website and check out capecrawfordtourism.com.au All the booking and pricing details are available on Sandy's website. Thanks so much, Sandra. Really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thank <laughs> you for coming. It's no. been a pleasure having you. No, it's been great seeing this country. It's just beautiful. Yeah, no, it's an absolutely stunning area. Yeah, no, yeah, gorgeous. Feel blessed to come here. Yeah, yeah, no, thank so you. So now we've saved the best till last. All Off right. Woohoo, chop a ride. Yeah. Chop a ride. <laughs> After leaving the Lost City, there was still enough time in the day to head off in the direction of Lindman National Park. Approximately 200 kilometres north on the Savannah Way is a quaint little waterhole called Butterfly Springs and it is the only place in the park suitable for swimming. This is Butterfly Springs. What an oasis after you've been driving all day. The towering rocky cliffs that envelop Butterfly Springs come to life as the sun sets them aglow in the late afternoon. Aha, this is living. This is the Lindman Bight River crossing, and by going across here, you're actually following pretty closely in the explorer's footsteps, Ludwig Leichhardt. He brought his party across here in 1845. It's got a concrete causeway now, so it's not too bad to cross at all, but keep your eyes out for those crocodiles. Behind me here are four hills and they're called the Four Arches and the one closest to me, the one closest to the river, is the one that Leichhardt actually climbed to survey the land to see which direction he needed to take his party. He was heading for Coburg for Port Essington. And that's it for this episode. I just spotted a barrow over there a minute ago so hopefully I'm not too late I'm going to go and get my fishing rod. <laughs>